Carol Simpson. Good evening. In Iraq tonight, two agreements have been announced that would protect the Kurdish population and change the entire political character of that country if only Saddam Hussein lives up to them. Kurdish rebel leaders say they've made a deal to bring full democracy to Iraq and autonomy to the Kurdish minority. And United Nations officials say Saddam has reluctantly agreed to a 500-man police force in the Kurdish homeland in northern Iraq. ABC's Dennis Trout is in Iraq. The United Nations Guard stopped for an overnight rest in Baghdad before heading to their post in Dahuk, where they're assigned to protect the Kurds. This is a deployment of United Nations Guard designed to uh, create a climate of reassurance, as I said, among the uh, refugee and displaced people. Iraqi officials at first had balked at a UN presence in the north, but apparently decided that's better than an indefinite stay by British and American forces. Baghdad is promising still bigger concessions in negotiations with the Kurds themselves. We are still negotiating and we are optimistic and we hope that we will reach the agreement very soon. Kurdish rebel leader Masoud Barzani claims Baghdad is offering to restructure its entire government on democratic principles. Among the key points agreed to already, a new constitution and free elections countrywide, an end to the dominance of Saddam Hussein's Ba'ath Party, and autonomy for the Kurds, including a separate budget. Barzani claims that only the question of how much of Iraq's oil-rich north would be administered by Kurds stands in the way of a full and formal agreement. But there's no timetable yet for any of this. Skeptics in Iraq and elsewhere ask why there are no declarations from Saddam Hussein and his top aides if so much progress and so many concessions have been made. We don't trust Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein is a weak now. He just wants uh, the sanctions to be lifted so he could get him back in position. And, uh, and probably in a, week, in a year time, he's going to be again uh, fighting the curse. And this time, if he fights the curse and his curse will be scattered, it will be the end of the curse. 200,000 Kurdish refugees still cling to Turkish mountainsides rather than go back to Iraq. It will take more than promises from Baghdad or the United Nations to convince those who fled that Iraq is now a safe place for them. Dennis Trout, ABC News, Baghdad. Iraqi troops today abandoned some of their checkpoints around Dohuk and withdrew from that northern provincial capital. The hope is that with Saddam's soldiers gone, Kurdish refugees will begin returning to Dohuk in large numbers. The war of words between South Africa's white government and Nelson Mandela's African National Congress escalated today. Mandela's group said it will boycott talks with the government on South Africa's political future. The government denounced the ANC's move as irresponsible. At the heart of the dispute is continuing and escalating black-on-black -black violence. Here's ABC's Don Cladstrup. It is the continuation of this, and the unwillingness, according to the ANC, of the South African government to do more about it, that prompted today's announcement. The time is long past for the government to have acted. What surprises us sometimes is that there doesn't seem to be the same sense of urgency among the other sections of the South African population. In this year alone, more than a thousand people have been killed in black township fighting. Violence which could spread, warns Nelson Mandela, unless the government takes action soon. As long as it allows this violence to continue, there is a danger that this violence must spread to the white area. In an ultimatum last month, the ANC demanded the government take stronger action to end the violence. Among the demands, the banning of spears. While the government has banned nearly all other weapons, spears have been excluded because Zulu supporters of the rival Nkata Freedom Party say they are part of their heritage. Until these so-called cultural weapons are banned, the ANC says it will not discuss constitutional questions with the government, though talks on other matters will continue. Clearly, there is not war between the ANC and the government, but equally clearly, the public perception is growing of a breakdown between them, which could have enormously serious implications. The danger being that by the time both sides are in a position to talk seriously with each other, they will have lost control of the escalating violence. Don Cladstrip, ABC News, Johannesburg. 
In Seoul, South Korea today, three people set themselves on fire, one of them fatally, as part of a massive nationwide anti-government protest. In all, more than 200,000 people took to the streets. The capital was paralyzed by violent clashes between protesters hurling rocks and firebombs and riot police responding with tear gas. Coming up with banks failing every week, how do you know your money's safe? And later in this broadcast, why there's new hope for women who've gone to jail for fighting violence with violence. And how to use your computer to improve your mental health. 